let's read together. Lord, by human minds are unable to fathom what a life will be like if you had not died to give us all of humanity a chance for salvation. We read in Paul's letter to the Ephesians that in the past we were labeled as strangers from the covenant of promise and had no hope and were without God in the world. By dying on the cross, you brought us into the fold of heaven, and we are no longer a far off. At this very moment, we confess our love to you and our eagerness to tell everyone we meet about the grand story of salvation. In Christ Jesus, we are no longer strangers and servants, but now we are fellow citizens with the saints and of the household of God. Amen. And now for our assurance of forgiveness. Children of God, by grace are you saved through faith. For it is written that none should perish and that all should come to repentance. We are the Lord's children. We are created in Christ unto good works, which God has already So we know that on the night of betrayal, 
and desertion. Jesus seated in the upper room with his 12 disciples. He said, one of you will betray me. But then he thought it right that he should break bread and serve it to his disciples. So on that night, Jesus took the bread and he broke it and he gave it to his disciples and he said, this is my body that is broken for you. Every time you do it, you will do it in remembrance of me. This is the bread of life. You can now take and eat. And in that very moment, Jesus also took the cup and he said, this is the covenant of my blood that is shed for you. Every time you do it, you do it in remembrance of me. This is the cup of joy. This is the cup of life. Let us take and let us drink. Join me now in the prayer of thanksgiving. Let us read slowly. Bountiful God, we give you thanks that you have refreshed us at your table by granting us the presence of Christ. Strengthen our faith, increase our love for one another, and send us forth into this world with courage and peace, rejoicing in the power of Holy Spirit. Amen. So now that we have refreshed ourselves at the table of the Lord, the grace and beauty of the Holy Spirit is with us. We know that God embraces us despite our sinfulness and imperfections. This should be a sustained source of consolation and hope in our lives. God meets us, He meets our frailty, our fear, He meets everything with love, He is without judgment, or He does not exclude anyone. God's love is greater, to, greater than we can imagine. His love is given to us as a roadmap for our daily journeys, Jesus said, I have given you a model to follow, so that as I have done for you, so also you should do to others. As we enter our sacred service of Tenebrae, our first reading, The Shadow of Betrayal, taken from Matthew 26, Verses 20 to 25, Heather. When it was evening, he took his place with the twelve, and while they were eating, he said, Truly I tell you, one of you will betray me. And they became greatly distressed and began to say to him, one after another, Surely not I, Lord. He answered, The one who has dipped his hand into the bowl with me will betray me. The Son of Man goes as it is written of him, but woe to that one by whom the Son of Man is betrayed. It would have been better for that one not to have been born. Judas, who betrayed him, said, Surely not I, Rabbi. 
He replied, You have said so. Our second reading, The Shadow of Desertion, from Matthew 26, verses 31 to 35. Bob. Second reading. Second reading, Shadow of Desertion, Matthew 26, verses 31 to 35. Then Jesus said to them, You will all become deserters because of me this night. For it is written, I will strike the shepherd, and the sheep of the flock will be scattered. But after I am raised up, I will go ahead of you to Galilee. Peter said to him, Though all become deserters because of you, I will never desert you. Jesus said to him, Truly I tell you, this very night before the cock crows, you will deny me three times. Peter said to him, Even though I must die with you, I will not deny you. And so said all the disciples. Our third reading, Agony of the Soul. He came out and went, as was his custom, to the Mount of Olives. The disciples followed him. When he reached the place, he said to them, Pray that you may not come into the time of trial. Then he withdrew from them about a stone's throw, knelt down and prayed, Father, if you are willing, remove this cup from me, yet not my will, but yours be done. Then an angel from heaven appeared to him and gave him strength. In his anguish he prayed more earnestly, and his sweat became like great drops of blood falling down on the ground.
Shared vigil, Mark 14, 32 41. They went to a place called Gethsemane, and he said to his disciples, Sit here a while I pray. He took with him Peter, James, and John, and began to be distressed and agitated. He said to them, I am deeply grieved, even to death. Remain here and keep awake. And going a little further, he threw himself on the ground and prayed that if it were possible, the hour might pass from him. He said, Abba, Father, for you all things are possible. Remove this cup from me. Yet, yeah, not what I want, but what you want. He came and found them sleeping, and he said to Peter, Simon, Are you asleep? Could you not keep awake for one hour? Keep awake and pray that you may not come into the time of trial. The spirit indeed is willing, but the flesh is weak. And again he went away and prayed, saying the same words. And once more he came and found them sleeping, for their eyes were very heavy and they did not know what to say to him. He came a third time and said to them, Are you still sleeping and taking your rest? Enough! The hour has come. The Son of Man is betrayed into the hand of sinners. Linda. 
I'm not asking you to take them out of the world, but I ask you to protect them from the evil one. They do not belong to the world, just as I do not belong to the world. Sanctify them in your truth. Your true word is truth. As you have sent me into the world, so have I sent them into the world. And as for their sakes, I sanctify myself, so that they may also be sanctified in truth. I ask not only on behalf of these, but also on behalf of those who will believe in me through their word, and that they may all be one. As you, Father, are in me, and I am in you, may they also be in us, so that the world may believe that you have sent me. The glory that you have given me, I have given them, so that they may be one, as we are one. Jesus had spoken these words, he went out with his disciples across the Kidron Valley to a place where there was a garden, which he and his disciples entered. Now Judas, who betrayed him, also knew the place, because Jesus often met there with his disciples. So Judas brought a detachment of soldiers together with police from the chief priests and the Pharisees. And they came there with lanterns and torches and weapons. Then Jesus, knowing all that was to happen to him, came forward and asked them, Whom are you looking for? They answered, Jesus of Nazareth. Jesus replied, I am he. Judas, who betrayed him, was standing with them.
Then the soldiers led him into the courtyard of the palace, that is, the governor's headquarters. And they called together the whole cohort, and they clothed him in a purple cloak. And after twisting some thorns into a crown, they put it on him. And they began to salute him, Hail, King of the Jews. They struck his head with a reed, spat on him, and knelt down in homage to him. After mocking him, they stripped him of the purple cloak and put his own clothes on him. Then they led him out to crucify him. was God. In the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God, and the Word was God. He was in the beginning with God. All things came to be through Him, and without Him 
not one of them came into being. What has come into being in him was life, and the life was the light of all people. And the word became flesh and lived among us. And we have seen his glory, the glory as of a father's only son, full of grace and truth. He was in the world, and the world came into being through him. Yet the world did not know him. But to all who received him, who believed in his name, he gave power to become children of God. And this is the judgment, that the light has come into the world, and people loved darkness rather than light, because their deeds were evil. It is I, Jesus, who sent my angel to you. 
with this testimony for the churches. I am the root and the descendant of David. I am, Jesus in scripture, I am the bright and morning star. Jesus said, the spirit and the bride say come, and let everyone who hears say come, and let anyone who is thirsty come, let anyone who wishes take the water of life, salvation is free, it is a gift. I want everyone who hears the words of the prophecy of this book, and here comes to us as ministers, we have a price to pay. Jesus said, if anyone adds to the words of this book, we can't rewrite the Bible. Jesus said, if anyone adds to them, God will add to that person the plagues described in this book. This is scary. God will take away that person's share in the tree of life and in the holy city which are described in this book. Jesus closes the book of Revelation and said, I am the one who testifies to these things and surely, surely I will come again. Amen. Come Lord Jesus. The grace of the Lord Jesus be with you all. Amen. And may the Lord watch over you when we are absent from one another. Amen. I know, I was watching you the whole time. Thank you. Thank you. Everybody.
good lesson. Or maybe good. Still on the camera? <laughs> you have anything to say to the world? No, I just want to make sure I'm on the camera. <laughs>